Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Um, today I'm going to show you a few different styles of jugs. Uh, all of them are going to be noodles, and uh, I'm going to show you the differences of how they're set up, why they're set up that way, and um, the new ones that I just made, and why I've made them this way. Um, last year, I actually built this noodle right here, and I built this jug. It's it, it's pretty pretty cool, pretty unique. It's um, I've watched a lot, a lot of YouTube videos and did a lot of research on what kind of line to use, uh, what kind of hooks to use, how to set them up, and I actually have used them a lot. I've, I built 20 of these and I've probably thrown them out, I don't know, 30 or 40 times. I've had great success with them. Um, every time I throw them out, I, I mean, I always catch fish on them. And anyways, I'm, I'm trying to perfect the technique of jug fishing. Uh, I've only been doing it for you know a, a year or two years, but I'm I'm kind of intense about it. But I'm going to show you this jug and how I've got it set up and why I've got it set up that way. First off, I want to show you this one. All it is is a three-quarter inch PVC. Uh, it's got a T on the end. I'll show you why that's there here in a minute. It's got an end cap with reflective tape. Makes it a little bit easier to see if you're going to go night fishing. You can take a spotlight with you and they stand straight up and you can see them a lot better. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll put like a little piece of rebar in here and they'll set them like this and whenever they get a bite, it hits and it'll stand up and it'll let you know that you've got a bite, which is a great idea. The only thing I don't like about it is not a lot to do, I know I have a bite. Everybody else out there on the lake knows that you have a bite too. And let's just be honest, man, people run jugs and you're not there to find them. So they can come by and pull your fish or, 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 or whatever, you know, worse, cut your jugs. Each one of these jugs, I think, uh, to build one from, if you don't have anything, no PVC, no line, no hooks, no sinkers, nothing like that, just start to finish to build 20 of them. It's, it cost me about six bucks a piece. And um, I, would, I would say that they're gonna last quite a while. Just leave them out of the sunlight and take care of them. These are the ones I built last year. Anyways, they're, uh, they're the thick foam noodles the way I've got them set up, they're, let's pull the line off here. And I've got my hook set, if you can see that or not. It's one, two, three, the three hooks on each one. Uh, the ones that I just made are gonna have four. You can make them with, I would say, at least put two hooks on them. The more bait you have in the water, the better chances you have, you have of catching a fish, uh, the better chance you have of tangling your line up. Anyways, I pull the first hook off. And I'll show you a little, it's what it looks like. There's my, if you can see that or not. That's about how far I have it sitting off the bottom. And the reason why I have a little extra, extra tag down here is if for some reason you get hung up on the bottom and your line breaks, you can just, you got, you got room to tie another knot in there and um, attach another weight to it. And that way you don't ruin your whole jug because your, your weight's way up here by your line. So leave, leave yourself a little extra line. But anyways, these down here is connected. It's a uh, it's a barrel swivel, so the weight will spin, and it's on one of those interlock clips. So what I've done here, weights are expensive, so I've made my own. This is a uh, Dixie cup. It's about a two pound weight. Yeah, it's kind of heavy, but um, I I run mine in a, in a little John boat, and I I can only go about 15 miles an hour. So if my jugs blow all the way across the lake, man, it's gonna take me all day to find them. So I put a little bit bigger weight on there, and that way the fish can't move them as well. Anyways, all you do, you hook your weight on there, and just clip it. I've never had a weight come off of that right there. Now I have lost one weight one time. Um, I've had great success with these jugs, but I think I'm gonna have better success with the ones that I just made, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Anyways, I run my jugs, they say to, to run them and leave a little bit of slack in your line. And what that's going to do is your jug will drift over a little bit like that. And whenever it does, you can see how this line's getting tangled up on there. Well, if your bait is right there on that line like that, man, to me, I've never really caught a fish on with a lot of slack in my line. So the new jugs that I made are, are, are improved, and you'll see that in a minute. Now, I've caught a lot of fish on these jugs. 
But when they say they, they say you fish on the bottom for catfish, okay, I understand that. And I went out last year and I set out quite a few jugs. I set these 20 jugs out that I've got. And I ran them three times a day. It was hot. It was fun. And I caught a lot of fish. But the problem that I had was whenever I left this big weight, maybe I was using too big of a weight. Um, you guys might know better than me. But I will tell you this. Wherever I set my jugs with this weight, they were there whenever I came back, man. The fish could not drag them off. The only problem that I was having, it was hot outside, middle of, middle of July, whenever I was running these things. And I would, sometimes I would set them and I'd go back and run them real quick. And I'd have a few fish on there that would already be dead. They'd be turning white. Now I kept them and I cleaned them and I ate them because their gills still had a little bit of color in them. But they just, man, you got to be careful with that. Pulling dead fish up is not near as fun as whenever you can feel them fighting you all the way up. So what I started doing was leave my weight off the bottom a little bit. There's something in the lake called a thermocline. I did a little bit of research on it, and it's where the oxygen level is in the lake. Well, if those catfish can't get, it's either above or below that thermocline to get their oxygen, they'll die. And if you have this big weight on the bottom, well, they can't move, man. They're, I mean, it's like tying a weight to them and throwing them on the bottom of the lake. They, they drown. They, 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 they die. So anyways, I started leaving my, fish, or my, my weight off the bottom, you know, just that much. Suckers work great, man. I caught more fish, and they were alive longer. And my, but my jugs, I had to chase them down a little bit, which is not a big deal. Me personally, I like to leave them out overnight. That's why I, I was sinking them to the bottom. Anyways, here's how it's, here's how it works right here. And everything's on barrel swivels. I I highly suggest barrel swivels because it'll keep your line from getting tangled up. And that's kind of how it is. Anyway, that's how my jug is right there. Three hooks, and they're all J-hooks. There's normal J-hooks, and they're, uh, they're four off. So you reel it back up, clip that weight off. One thing I like about detaching the weight is, man, now you don't have a giant weight hanging off this jug, which is nice. So what I'll normally do, take like a little five-gallon bucket or something like that, or a bag, whatever you got, and I throw all my weights in there, you know, 20, I usually carry like 23 weights in case I lose a couple. All these, I, uh, I actually throw them in a bag. I started out throwing them in a big container. And the problem that I had with that was when I was out there on the lake and I got all my jugs thrown out in the water. I was excited, I was happy. But now I've got this container in the middle of the boat. And I've got a small boat, whether you got a big boat, small boat, that big container for me was an issue, man. The room. Is, is a big deal, man, because I, I like to throw my jugs out and go bass fish for a little bit, go crappie fish, sand bass, whatever. <clears throat> so by carrying a bag and keeping all my jugs in a bag, when I got done, I just rolled the bag up and sat down on it, put it underneath the seat, whatever I had to do. So anyways, there's the first jug. <clears throat> and my dad for Christmas last year, he actually bought 10 of these jugs, and they were $100. So they're pretty cool. I tell you what I like about them. Or I don't like about them. One, they're they're only about 20, 25 foot deep, which I fish a lot of 40 foot waters, and I can't hit the bottom with them. Second thing I don't like about them is they've got monofilament liners on them. There's nothing wrong with that, but you will have to replace them. How many guys have grabbed their fishing poles from last year and went to catch a fish and their line breaks? And your line's going to rot. That monofilament's going to rot out on you. A lot faster than this braided nylon wheel. What I do like about them is they've got the barrel swivels on them so your line never gets tangled up. And they've also got these circle hooks on them. Now here, here's the key on these circle hooks. That they look a lot bigger than a regular J hook. And they are. Don't let that fool you. The main thing that you need to worry about on a, on a circle hook is the point from here to here. Because those catfish don't have fish or don't have mouths like a perch or like a bass or like a crappie. They're real thick. So what, what the circle hook is designed to do is when the fish comes up, he sees your bait, he, he comes up and he hits your bait and swims off with it. And what it'll do is it'll hook in the side of his mouth. So if he's got real th real thick cheeks, he's a he's a he's a big catfish, the hook's not gonna go all the way around his mouth, it's just gonna hit. And slide off and you'll lose fish that way now I've caught a lot of caught a lot of little fish on big hooks 
I never caught a big fish on a little hook. And if I do, it's not on there very good. This right here, if you're going to run jugs, circle hooks are the way to go. The second thing is he's got a one pound weight on here. Now they drift a lot more, which is fine. One pound weight will do the trick. The only thing is, is it's tied onto it, which is not real big, but those one pound weights, those are expensive. If you're going to build your own, you're going to buy 20 of those dudes, 25 of those dudes, you're looking at 25, 40 bucks for those weights. All right. So I'm going to show you the drug that I made, and then I'm going to build one for you to show you how I do it. All right. It's got four hooks on it, and each one of these jugs have 50 foot of line on them. Now I can fish this jug at 5 foot, 10 foot, 15 foot, 25 foot, 30, 40, 50 feet. <clears throat> what I like about being able to adjust the depth on it, I haven't seen any other jugs out there. I've seen one jug online and they do them, they sell them commercially. And they use a cleat. And it's a good technique. But this right here, man, it works great. Once you set it, it's not going to let any more line out. It's not a pain in the butt. It's easy to do and I'll show you how I do it. So pretty much, it's got four hooks on it. One, two, three, four, and as you notice, I've used a circle hooks. Now, a second ago, whenever I showed you how this leader would fall down on a main line and get tangled up, the last time I went fishing, I caught 25. I cleaned 25 fish, and we caught them in probably about five hours. The fish were biting so good, basically, we just ran jugs all day long. It was a lot of fun. But I'd come up to one of my green jugs, and that sucker had three hooks on it. All, all three hooks were clean, there was no fish on them. That's not cool, man. You should be catching some fish. Now, I understand you're not going to catch fish on every single hook, which I'm, under, I'm, I'm good with that. But I do think that these circle hooks work better. And the reason why, as I set a couple of these jugs out, now I ran this jug, it's got four hooks on it. Two hooks had bait on them, and the other two hooks had fish on them. And I think the main reason for that is this monofilament leader right here is stiffer, and it holds it out away from this main line, it doesn't get tangled up as bad. The second reason why I think that this thing works better is because of the circle hook. Once they once they, they, they got your bait and they start swimming off with it, it's a lot harder to steal your bait off a circle hook than it is a, a J hook. And that was a very, a very successful jug. But I like my green jug and I like that orange jug. One thing I want to I want to point out is uh, on my jugs I went from green to orange, and the reason for that is whenever I'm running these jugs, I can see my green jugs at about 60 to 80 yards out, which is pretty good. But if you got a little bit of wave going on, those jugs kind of disappear. Those orange jugs I can see out over 100 yards, which is a huge deal when you're looking for 20 of them. Trying to find your jugs is a it's probably the, you know, one of the hardest tasks of jug fishing. All right, enough about that. Here's what I've got on this. Those little clips that I had on the green jugs, they kind of hurt your fingers a little bit. So what I've done is I've got a trot line clip that I just hook it up there so it don't get tangled up. And now it's connected to the main line. I just want to show you real quick, if you're going to do them, you go with braided nylon. Don't use the twisted. The twisted will come apart. I did half and half on my green jugs last year and the twisted starting to fray a little bit, man. Use braided. And here's what I do. You don't have to use 500 pound braided line. You're not going to catch a 500 pound catfish. And if you do, it's not going to fit in the boat with you anyways. And, and here's what I've got. I got it from Academy. It's 250 feet of green braided 125 pound test. And it's nylon, or braided nylon. For my leaders, I went to Walmart. And I think, this is, I think this is twisted, which I couldn't find any braided that I liked that was small enough test. And I need them. I needed them to be thin enough and small enough to fit to the eyes on the hooks that I was using. So I, I wound up getting the, uh, the, the twisted, the, the twisted nylon here, or the, yeah, the twisted braid. Anyways, that's not a big deal. These things are real easy to replace. They're a lot easier than replacing the whole main line on your jug. The second thing is, is the barrel swivels. Now I bought the ones with the, the interlocks and the barrel swivels connected to them. A little extra work, but it was actually cheaper that way to do it. And I just cut this, the, the interlocks off the little snap pieces as I went along. It took probably an extra 20 or 30 minutes to snap them off. But these are 
These are just black barrel swivels. You can get black and get gold, silver, whatever you've got at your stores. And these are size fives. They're a little bit smaller than the ones I use on the green, and I like them better. Okay, I think that's, I think that's it. Right now, I'm using the same weights. It's just like I said, a, a Dixie cup filled up with concrete, and I got some some of this wire from um, from Lowe's. It's about a big roll of it, it's like seven bucks, and you just you know, clip you off a piece, you know, so long, fold it in half, and whenever you get down here to the bottom, you don't want to stick it straight in like this, because whenever you're pulling up on it, the straight, it'll just pull straight out like that. So you want to put a little bend in it on both sides, that way it has a little, little umph. Never lost, never lost the uh, wire out of these. Now the first ones that I made, all the wire started pulling out, and that was no bueno. All right, let me show you what, how this, this jug is made here. You got the trot line clip. Super easy. This clip's right on, not real hard on your hands. And that sucker will sit there and spin without tangling your line up all day because the, the barrel swivel is spinning with it. All right. So you just pull it off. And here's my jug right there. Now, like I said, I run mine off the bottom. So they're straight up and down, okay? And the main problem that I thought that I was having was my leader was hanging down on my main line. Right here. Well, now what I did was I took a little... I got a bottle roller. It's 3 8 inside diameter PVC. It's, like a, it's what you would use for hooking up a water line on your refrigerator or something like that. So what I did was I bought my big roll of it, and I think I, they're three and a quarter inches long. And I took them with a pair of scissors, just cut them, took a drill, and you want to use the smallest hole that you can use to drill through there because you don't want a whole bunch of knots, and I didn't use beads on this one. I try to make them more simple. Uh, that way there's less stuff to get tangled up because the beads will get hooked up in your, in your line as you're wrapped around. So anyways, when you're sitting on the bottom, I mean, there's your weight, there's your hook. Now, you throw them overboard, check that out, man. It's not tangled up, and I think that's going to be great. I haven't been able to throw them out yet. I just had a brand new baby like two days ago. Mom almost had me tied up. But I can promise you that right there is going to help. <clears throat> now, you're probably wondering... Why that T is on there, and if you look, zoom in right here, Bubba, there's a knot right here, and a knot way up here. So this thing can slide a lot, and I'll show you the reason for that. The reason for that is so you can change, change these out right here. Now, you just pull right here in the center, in between those two knots, there's a knot and a knot, basically in the center and all you do just pull it down just like that now you can access your barrel swivel change your hooks out change your leaders out whatever you need to do now if you look that main line is running through the barrel swivel <coughs> so you got the main line Plastic, barrel swivel, plastic, and two knots to keep from sliding up and down. Now let's say that that's all I wanted to fish right there. It's only fishing five or six feet. Now what's nice about, not, nice about this clip, you can clip it to one of those other weights. You can clip it to whatever you want to clip it to. You can make smaller weights. You can make bigger weights. <laughs> but what you would do is you just reach in tie a little half hitch just like that and pull it down and now no more lines going to come off that jug it's set just like that you got the weight of your jug right there and now you're fishing four foot of water and you've got three hooks left on the jug what I like about these is I don't have any 20 foot 
15 foot, 30 foot. I don't have any shallow, medium, or deep jugs that are all 50 footers, and I can do them, I can tie them off however I want. Now, the, the, the T part, the only thing it is, is to keep this line from sliding down and sliding off, because if it were to slide off, I would lose the rest of my line. And yeah, it would probably catch right here on the next hook, where it might not catch my rip my thumb up or whatever. A lot of times, whenever I set my drugs, I'll set them, let them hit the bottom, however many hooks I got out. That's however many hooks I've got out. Once they hit the bottom, I'll pull them off the bottom two or three wraps, which is about two or three feet. Tie my little half hitch in there, and I'm good to go. And the way all my jugs set in the water, put this thing back up. And man, these things are super easy. A little complicated at first, but they're not bad. But the way my jug's set up in the water is just like that, man. Just like that, the, the line coming out, everything's coming down below it. And now all my leaders are sticking off my line, which I love. I think that's going to help out a lot. All right. These jugs that I, I bought this time, the actual noodles were so big that I went ahead about three-quarter inch PVC and caps and tees and all that. And I got home to build them. Man, the PVC was sliding right through the foam. And uh, they, they, they should be pretty tight as they're going through there. So, how long, how long did I make my PVC sticks? How long did I make my foam noodles? That's, that's another question you're going to have, you know? Okay? The PVC comes in 10 foot sections, and that's 120 inches. So I got six, six jugs, six PVC pieces out of 120 inches. That makes them 20 inches a piece. So from here to here is 20 inches a piece. The first thing that's going to tear up on this jug, the first thing that you're going to want to replace, and this might be two, three, four years down the road, but I'm building these jugs thinking I'm going to have them for the next 10 or 15 years, and hopefully I'll make another YouTube video saying, hey, look, man, these are the jugs that I had for 15 years, and you'll be like, yeah, I remember you making that video. But the first thing that's going to tear up on these jugs is the foam. So what I've done is I've allowed me enough room where I can come back, cut the cut, uh, top off, pull the foam off, put the new foam on, put the new cap on. And my jug, my PVC is going to get a little bit shorter, but that's okay, because I've left enough room. So basically, this is actually a one inch PVC pipe, one inch cap, and a one inch T. So what I've done is I just, I cut all my PVC pieces. I'm making 20 at a time, and it takes me forever. It's a chore. You don't have to make 20, that's just what my state allows. I can have 20 jugs and five hooks a piece. I don't want five hooks. I just wanted three, now I went to four. I'm going to check it out, see how it goes. So I cut all my, my PVC at 20 inches, and my noodles, I think my noodles were like, I don't know, 52, 54 inches, or something like that. I just divided that by four. And I've got, I got four noodles out of, I got four jugs out of one noodle. And you say yours are 60 inches, I mean, you can do them at 15 inches a piece and get four, or however you want to do them. I just didn't want to waste any. I didn't want a, a bunch of extra PVC left over. I don't need a bunch of two or three inch pieces. I didn't want a bunch of small foam. I would recommend, uh, I've seen videos online saying nine inches is good, uh, 12 inches is good, whatever you want to do. I think these are, Fourteen inches and a quarter. So, fourteen inch noodles, twenty inch PVC. If I could have made them fifteen, I made them fifteen. If I could have made them sixteen, I made them sixteen. Doesn't matter to me. I just didn't want to waste anything. Now to build these things, after you put your put your your, your pipe through, get your foam on and your caps on, it took me a, it took me a drill bit. I think I was using seven and thirty seconds. Show you a little hole right here at the bottom, close to this T. Second thing you want to do: take a braided nylon, 125 pound test. You want to melt the end of it just a little bit. I will say this is hot, so whenever you do it, do it fast. I try to get it off my fingers because it will burn you to death. Kind of give it a little bit of a tip there. And I just run it right through that hole. I apologize if you can't see everything I'm doing. I just put it in that hole. Run it in. Now this hole is not, I mean, it's it's not much bigger than this hole in the PVC at all, this line. Turn it up. Gravity lets it kind of fall down. 
Sometimes they're harder than others. Sometimes they want to get twisted in there. Just got to keep working with them. They'll come out. There it is. Reach in there, grab it, pull it out. Now to keep this line from slipping back through that hole, all I do is I just tie me a little knot. Just like that. Take a pair of pliers. Grab the end, grab the end, not right here, because you don't want to damage your line. You take it, pull it kind of tight. And that right there would probably be sufficient. It wouldn't pull back through that hole. But you never know. Uh, one of the orange jugs that I had only had one knot on it and it was being held on by a bead and a knot. Yeah, either the bead shattered or the knot went through the bead or whatever, but it slipped all the way through the half inch PVC that it was using. And I lost the whole the whole shebang. Whatever fish was on there, all the hooks, all everything. And as you can tell, these things they I mean, whenever I'm in a rhythm and I'm building and I'm getting them knocked out, everything's cut, ready to roll. They take about 20, 25 minutes a piece to build. And um, about six dollars, six dollars to make them. So in the second knot. I don't know if you've seen that, I'm going to redo it here. The second knot, just tie you a second knot, and whenever you, you go to cinch it down, you don't want that other knot way back here. You want to tie your second knot right on top of the first one. And the reason for that is it makes this, this first knot bigger. Now you got to pull all, all that to your jug. Now I do everything a little bit extreme, man. I go big or go home, I play to win. That's just who I am. I'm obsessive compulsive. I talk a lot. And uh, when I go fishing, man, this is a lot of work. You gotta load the boat up, you gotta make sure you can go, take time off work or you're on your weed. There's a lot of things you could be doing, so whenever I go, I'm trying to catch the uh, most amount of fish as I can. And uh, whenever, I, whenever I come back home, Tell the wife, they get the crease fired up, call the buddies over, we're having a fish fry. And a lot of times, man, we do have fish fries whenever I come home. Like I said, last time we went out, I cleaned 25. We, uh, I cleaned, we ate probably half of those and we had 10 people over. So, I mean, that's pretty good. I went ahead, if you didn't see that, I tied a third knot in there. I mean, that thing right there will never, never, that, that little bitty hole, that big knot will never, never come through. Just, I barely burned that a second ago to get it pushed through. So I'm gonna come back and burn it one more time. That kinda, it'll turn black like a little mushroom and just kind of melt. Don't touch it, because it's hot. And all you do, that line will break before that knot comes out. And that line ain't gonna break. So then, I got 50 foot, that's, you can't see it, but it's going way back out past the driveway. I'll just bring it up here. One, two. Each one of these wraps is about 12 inches. Now I got to cut on a car tire. Give me just a second. dudes up here all 50 feet now we're gonna run them I'm, I'm gonna build this entire jug so take a second but uh, if you've watched it this far man you're interested you want to know how to do it I appreciate you sticking around and I promise you these jugs right here nobody else in the world has these jugs unless you go home and make them and uh, I just made a video of it because I got sick of searching I know there's guys out there like me that, oh yeah, we'll try this, we'll try that. Look, I wanted to put all my experience in one video, and uh, I wish this video that I'm getting ready to make was out there whenever I did it, because I would have used it. So there's the end of my line. I'm just going to burn it real quick. Now this one you want to burn kind of 
you want to thin it out a little bit because you got to shove it through your barrel swivels and your little plastic pieces and all that. Like I said, remember do this quick. If you're a kid and you ever lit black cats, ones with the green fuses are easy. Ones with the gray fuses to light them and throw them with a blow up in your hand. Now that's impressive. It's kind of the same deal, man. You light it, get it off your fingers quick. You start mounting wires and you burn yourself, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now I've already got a bunch of these pre-cut. And I've got my barrel swivels and my interlocks in here. Just so you know when I'm, whenever I'm reaching, you know what I'm reaching for here. So, what I'm going to need, I'm going to need four of those. Four barrel swivels. And one more barrel swivel with the interlock snap for the weight. The easiest way I've found to run this line, now to, to run it, just may just pull you a little bit off there. Throw your jug over here in the floor. It'll be alright. She ain't gonna run off on you. But you gotta run this through here. And man, you're gonna spend all day trying to get that sucker through there. So what I found out, got me some little 30 pound model filament here. Let's cut you off a little piece of that. And all I'm doing is just tying me a knot right here. Just like that. Now that knot right there will slide up and down. It's a little slip knot. Put it on the end, and you're actually going to use this to pull this through your stuff. It's like the extra. Cut it off. Now instead of fighting it for 15 minutes, you're gonna be good to go. I'm gonna use this little screwdriver to help me out here. Pretty much. Now you've got your line, you got your little model film that slipped on there. You take your barrel swivel. And you're gonna line this piece up right here. This is where your your uh, your lead's getting ready to go here in a minute. So you line it up just like that. It, I mean, it's kind of a pain, and you don't have to put these plastic things on there if you don't want. But uh, it will keep it will keep your leader from hanging on your main line. Now that's in there pretty good. Take your monofilament. Give me a piece there, it's not all chewed up and bent there, it'll work a lot better. Take your monofilament, run it through the hole in the plastic, right through the barrel swivel, and bam, you're in. Just take it, you'll take the tip right here, just kind of barely place it in there, kind of guide it. Once you got her in there, bam, give her a tight little pull, and she's on. Now I promise you, that right there, that, that seemed like that took a while. That hole's really small. And the reason why I want that hole small is I only want to tie one knot and I don't want this thing slipping down. I want it to be as tight as it can be.
want you to get them going. I know that about chicken wing, baby. Come on. That big old spit tune over there, don't I? And what I like about these, man, is they're 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 hard. They're they're tough enough to do the job. But I mean, you can bend them. However you want. If they're if they're bent like that, you can take them. Bend it back up so your lead's sticking out a little bit better. I like that. They're not metal, so they should they should cut my line up. I'm sure somebody's gonna see this little plastic piece right here and realize what I'm talking about. And there'll be a damn rave about it. Somebody's gonna make millions of dollars. And it should have been me. But you know what? Got a wife, baby, a four-year-old, and one that just got here. I got time to mess with. It. And I'm surprised there's not something already out there for this. To be honest with you. Like I, I was gonna use little plastic tees because it'd be easier. I wouldn't have to drill everything myself. But each one of these little plastic pieces cost me a nickel. Five cents. A plastic tee is 99 cents. I need 80 of them. Now I need some extras. This needs to get tore up. And I'm not trying to spend 10 bucks a jug to make these things. Just take that line right there. I've got all four of them on there. Just take it. Just cut it off. Throw it away. Remelt that tip. Like a black cat, baby. Alright, now I'm putting my barrel swivel on. Right here, I just tie me up. Just a normal little knot like I did on the front of the jug. You pull it down close, leave just a little bitty tag. You won't have to cut it again. That right there probably would do the trick. I'm going to go ahead and tie one more. Flip that knot right over the other knot. Close right down there to it. Bam. Okay. I'll put my trot line clip on here in a second. I'm not going to put it on right now because I'm going to have to pull a lot of line through and I don't want anything getting tangled up. <clears throat> Run your first one. Got all four of them on there. Take those three. Get them out of the way. Don't worry about this one. How far do you want this from this? That's up to you. Like I said, if you ever bust your weight off, you got to tie another knot. Between here and here is going to get shorter. So, I mean, you can run it right down here on the bottom like that, and that'll be all right. But if you ever lose your hook or your weight, tie another one, it's going to be right there next time. Man, that's cool. You can do whatever you want to do. Me, I like to run them, I don't know, about that far off the bottom. Is that about a foot? Yeah, that, that's about right. 15, 16 inches, something like that. Just take it. Tie a, a real simple little granny knot. And bam. 
that right there will keep it from slipping down. And since that hole was so small, we had to use that monofilament to run it through. You only need one knot, you don't need any beads. Now, I, I was going to use beads, and I was going to use red ones. And I bought a pack of them, they're like five bucks. I think I had that included in the price to make them six dollars. So they're like five fifty a piece to make the jugs now. And if, if I take these back, which I won't, I'll probably use them to fish with. So what, what wound up happening was this line that I, I, I was telling you about. Uh, I got a 125 pound line. I thought that was going to be small enough to slip through that bead. But uh, without drilling every bead out, I wasn't going to get them to go through. And the only reason why I needed beads was so this thing wouldn't slip down. So the second thing you want to do is you got to tie a knot above it. And remember, you're going to want to change your, your leader line out or you change your hooks out. You're going to be able to get to them. So what I'll do is I'll start off and I'll tie a knot way up here. Got a little hole right there. Just run this right back here through it. Looks like a mess, but whenever you start doing them yourself, it's not that bad. So then, I got my knot ready to cinch down right here. I'm gonna pull this up in the middle, take a little screwdriver, poke this thing through like that. Where I can, now I can get to my barrel swivel change my line out and I'm on that bottom bead so I want my top knot to be right here so all I'm going to do just work that knot up there knock knock hey how's it going I'm sorry making a video I'm sorry I apologize can you edit it oh no I, I'm not I don't know I'm, you I'm put just it on YouTube or something yeah. shut my mouth but that's it. So when you pull them, pull them tight, that's how you do it. It slides down just like that. Now, the next part here, how far do you want your hooks apart? Well, the biggest thing is, is what I found out is if you have them too close together, you've got a fish on this hook and you've got a, a fish on this hook, and you try to pull them into the boat, now you've got two angry, angry catfish in the boat with you and they're tangling all your line up. So what I like to do is put them, oh, about arm's length apart, and that's about six foot. I give them just a little bit extra. Grab that one, slide it down. Now the reason for that is, is while you're getting this fish off, that fish is still in the water hanging off the side of the boat. And that way you're not fighting two fish and all your line stuff's not getting tangled up. Because jugging, I mean, it can be dangerous. You get a hook caught in, in you or something. So now all I'm going to do is just tie me a little knot right below this one. Let's see here. Kind of doing it backwards here. That's right. You got to. That's the. That's the only bad thing about tying these knots is the first couple. They're not too bad, but as you go on, you're pulling a lot of string through there. Bam. Now it's up there. Now it's not going anywhere. And their arms length apart. I would say six, seven feet is plenty good. Five if you got a small boat. I like to give myself plenty of room. Now remember we gotta push this barrel swivel all the way out to where we get to it so you wanna tie your knot up up high up here. All I'm doing is just being careful not to tangle all my line up. Slide it up. Push the barrel swivel through. If I can get it. These little plastic pieces are kind of a pain, but uh, man, I think they're gonna make you a lot more successful catch a lot more fish so anyways I got two more hooks to tie 
And I do the same thing on the next two as I pull them out arm's length apart and it gets a little bit more difficult to tie your knots. It's not a huge deal. You just want to make sure when you pull this out that you got plenty of room to get to your, your lead line here in a second. And I'll show you how to put those on with your hooks. And you're on that bottom knot. Then you just take your top knot. And you just work it down. Pull it tight. Now, I'm leaving the other two plastic pieces on there like they are. And I think I cut these. These are three and a quarter inches, these plastic pieces. And I think these right here I cut at 11 and a half inches. Yeah, I wind up, I wind up redoing them. But I do, the ends are melted. This is actually, this is 72 pound test. Put it together, take those two pieces, and tie a little knot. Now it's important, you want to work that knot all the way back to the ends. So that leave a lot of extra room. Then you think, man, that's probably not going to hold anything. Man, I've been using the same knot, the same technique for the last year and a half, and I've caught... I don't know, I won't over exaggerate, probably over 150 cats on these jugs. And that's on the super conservative side. That knot right there, it's not going anywhere. The next step is take your hooks. Now these are six aught, number sixes, and they're kale hooks. So they're a circle hook. And I think I bought 40 in a pack, and they're five bucks. Huh? And they're offset. Now, you run them through, don't run them through the back, you gotta run them through the front, and I'll show you why here in a second. You just take your lime, you're gonna have to, my eyes on these things are kind of small. run through just like that going from this this part of the, the front of the hook to the back of the hook and you want this knot you want it to be down here on this eye because if it's up here and if it's up here in the plastic piece it's not too big and it won't allow that barrel swivel to, to work and then your catfish is going to tangle your line up so just take your your knot run it through Actually, I'm sorry. Take the other end and run it through. Just so now the knot is on the eye of the hook. Same deal. Right through the barrel swivel. I like to make sure it's not all tangled up and twisted already. Make sure it's good and straight. Run your hook through. Bam, now if you ever need to replace this line or replace this hook, you want to use different hooks down the road, these hooks rot out, rust up, whatever, you can change them out. And by tying your knots up high and low, you've got room to do it. Now what I say about that plastic piece, I was kind of hanging down. I'd like to bend mine up just a hair. That can stick up a little bit. Now, if you zoom in a little bit right here, if you can see in this clear piece, when the fish hits it, all you see that barrel swivel in action there. The only thing that's going to get tangled up is this little line right here. That's it. The rest of your line isn't going to get messed with. And if you ran jugs before and you got you a couple good casts on there, guess what? Your jugs are still tangled up. It takes you 45 minutes to untangle them. Well, you just cut them and redo them. Fish your line, man, my lines have never been tangled up. The only reason why they've been tangled up is I have my hooks too close together and I have two fish in the boat with me at once. That's why I say spread them out. All right. Now the reason why I said run it through the front to the back is whenever you, it's kind of like snelling a hook, but you really can't, 
it, it, I tried to snell the hook with this line and this setup, and it was extremely hard to do, and it wasn't as, as effective. It wouldn't let me rotate inside of here, and I didn't want to use monofilament because I wanted to rust up, not rust up, you know, deteriorate and get, get weak on me. So anyways, when the fish comes by and it hits it, it's going to pull up on the hook and help set the hook. So anyways, there's that one. Right down here. Go ahead and tie the second one on. You get to your barrel swivel. Slide it down there in the middle. Take something small. I'll just use a little bit of screwdriver. Push it through. If I had just a little bit longer screwdriver, it'd be a lot easier. Now I got that out. Take your line again. Just like that. Just tie your little knot in it. Slide that knot all the way up there to the, the ends. Give her a little twist, run through your hook from the front to the back. Oh, that's easier said than done, trying to get to the eye. Run it through. Put your knot down there on the eye. Boom. That's it. You pull these, pull them at the same time. Make sure it's not all tangled up inside there. Slide her down. Now I'm going to save the last two hooks and I'll do them here in a minute when I'm off, off video. It already, like I said, it takes whenever I'm on a roll, it takes between 25 and probably 20 and 30 minutes to get them going. A little trot clip. There's a circle up here at the top. Now I was using these just to clip to my weights. They're kind of small and it hurts your fingers. I'm all about easy. Now, you just take your trot line clip, just like that. Take mine, put them at the top of the phone, just keep wrapping. And here's what's going to happen. When you set them, you can set them off 50 foot, you can tie them off like I showed you, and fish just one hook. But when they're in the water, that's how they're going to sit just like that. Like I said, run mine off the bottom. My lead line's off the main line. They're hanging out there to the side. Man, I don't think you could build a better jug than that. But that's it. I'm gonna write it. I get done, and I got them all ready to rock and roll. Just so whenever you're pulling them out, you know, you see those hooks. It's all kind of organized, makes it easy. But that's my first hook, my second hook, my third hook, and my fourth hook. They're not all, not all crossed over one another. I mean, however you run them, you'll get into a routine doing them. But um, 
Hey, if you like the video, just comment something down there at the bottom. If you got a better idea, hey, look, man, I'll build another 20 jugs if yours are better than mine. I'm, I'm looking for the best way out there, and that's why I posted this video. Uh, man, I hope you guys enjoyed. So, man, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I can improve on, uh, what you've done different, okay? All right. Good luck.